I think I built my first speaker when I was like 10 years old. Something I've always been into, and like anything else that you're passionate about, even if you have a pair of speakers, you're gonna look for reasons to build new ones. And since I just finished setting up a treated listening room, I'm using that as an excuse to build a new pair. I'm gonna be making these from solid cherry. So the first step is to do a lot of cutting and then more cutting and more cutting and more cutting and jointing and planing and measuring and sorting until you have enough material to build both speakers. I ended up using seven eight foot boards to get enough to finish these. Now that I have all the stock prepped, I can start cutting out the parts. And I should point out that these are not regular box speakers. These are open baffle. And basically what that means is that they're just the front panel of the speaker. But in my case, I'm making that front panel U-shaped. And these parts that I'm cutting here on the angle are for those sides or wings. I'm cutting these wing parts in pairs that are two different lengths so that they overlap in the corner. I'm folding down this table to start putting these together, but this is me kind of getting ahead of myself. Looking back at it after finishing both speakers, I wouldn't have started this way. Instead, I would have laid out the front panel, as you'll see later, cut out the recesses for the drivers, and then start assembly. The idea here was to put together these frames that alternate, and then while the glue is drying on those, I could put together more. After the glue dried on the first few, I drew a round over on the corners and used my bandsaw to cut that. And then I started gluing the layers together, and here you can see how the corners overlap. So I did four layers for the first speaker and then clamped that up. And then I did four layers for the second speaker and clamped that up. And it was at that point that I realized that I should have taken that other approach where I lay out the front panel and cut those recesses first and then start assembly. So I did that and that's what you're looking at here. You can see the pieces are numbered and taped together. This is the inside of the speaker and the recess that I'm cutting here is so that the driver is closer to the outside. With the recesses cut, I could go back to putting the frames together, following the same steps that I showed earlier. The parts are lined up really well, but just to be on the safe side, I'm doing some sanding here in case there's some mismatch. Putting these together was gluing up a few layers at a time and then getting as many clamps on there as I possibly can to squeeze it all tightly together. Then I have to leave that for a couple hours at least to dry before I glue it on any more layers. At just below the halfway point, the speaker starts to angle. So I had to make different frames for that with wing parts that are cut on an angle on the outside. And then to cut the angle on the inside, I use my bandsaw tilted to the correct angle. So you can probably imagine that adding that angle to the side made things quite a bit more complex. I let the glue dry overnight and then the next day I started the shaping on these. Cutting off the square corners where I didn't round them on the bandsaw, trimming off excess, and a lot of work with the electric plane and the belt sander.
With the majority of the rough shaping done, I switched to cutting out the holes for the drivers. And then because I love it so much, I couldn't wait to get back to sanding. And I also planed the bottom of the wing so that the speakers tilt back slightly. To finish these, I'm using oil-based polyurethane. And while that was drying, I designed the horn flare for the tweeters and used my Stepcraft CNC to cut those from solid walnut. I also decided to add a base, a fairly expensive one actually, made once again from solid walnut. That's two inches thick. Here I'm cutting out the profile for the first one on the CNC and then I'll finish the cutting on the bandsaw and then make the other one for the second speaker. The horn flares are a precise fit in the holes that I made in the top of the speaker, and I'm using polyurethane construction adhesive to glue those in. Then I can fasten the base and finally start putting the drivers in. This is a 15 inch woofer, and I'm using tabs to hold in place this rubber pad. The idea here is to allow the solid wood to expand and contract, so I can't screw that big woofer directly to the front panel. These clips are made from quarter inch plywood and I'll probably take them off later and paint them black. The mid-range and tweeter are small enough for me to screw those directly in place. With that done, I brought them down to my listening room where I did the wiring and got them hooked up. And if you're interested in more details on this project, I made a few more videos on my audio channel. There's a link in the description.